What's up, everyone, and welcome back to the Sarvage YouTube channel. My name is Sebastian. I'm here to join my brother, Hugo. What's up, everyone? And we are here to break down the week four divisional matchup between the Washington Commanders and the Dallas Cowboys. Now, the Dallas Cowboys come out on top 25 to 10. Ugo, what are your thoughts about this game? My my thoughts on the game, you know, it feels great being a three on one. Um, you know, it was a good outing from the offense and a fantastic outing about the defense, just like they've been doing every week. You know, week one was a bit a little overreaction from us, you know, losing your starting quarterback, but we didn't realize that at the time how good this team is and good teams figure out ways to win when they had the better talent on their roster. Um, what are your what are your thoughts? Who would have thought Cooper Rush winning three straight games after Dak Prescott gets hurt in week one? I mean, this defense has been dominant. Um, Joe Burrow and the Bengals couldn't do nothing. Daniel Jones and the Giants and Carson Wentz and the Commanders couldn't do anything against this stout pass rush. And in the bet in the secondary, locking down their top guys. Terry McLaurin, he only had like two catches today. Trayvon Diggs locked him up. And you just love to see this defense is flying around and making plays. Now, what are your thoughts about this defensive performance we had on Sunday? Um, it's just team team ball, honestly. And shout out to uh, Trayvon Diggs. You know, he got a lot of people always try to slander him, but I, we all know he's a good player. Um, but he's been shutting down these top receivers, Jamar Chase, Terry McLaurin. You know, he's doing his thing. And he got, he got a pick today as well at the end of the half. Um, but other than that, I thought Donovan Wilson stood out. Um, you know, he's fine all, all over the ball. It's going to make it difficult to just plug in Curse when he comes back in to the starting role. Um, and also, you know, players, it's always someone different each week. Melvin Gallimore also made big plays. Um, I just love the defense. Dan Quinn's a blessing. Um, what, are, what are your thoughts on this on this defense? This actually might be the best defense I've seen since um, I've been alive, at least. So. 100%. You know, Donovan Wilson, he led the team in tackles. He's been stepping up week in, week out. And you just like to see that with Curse injured. Now, the commanders, the same old Carson Wentz. Welcome back to the NFC East, Carson Wentz. We missed you. And Trayvon Diggs continues to pick him off like he was um, doing so when he was with the Philadelphia Eagles. And, and, and also, sorry to cut you off, um, Bland, you know, the preseason stand-up, he got, he got his hands on the ball too. So um, Bland, you know, making plays. He, studied, he, he stepped in for Jordan Lewis, and he did a great job today. 100%. Now, Carson Wentz, 25 completions, 42 attempts, 170 yards, one touchdown, and two interceptions. We talked about that. Now, let's go on the offensive side of the ball. CeeDee Lamb continues to emerge as a wide receiver one. Now, this is back-to-back -back games where he – proves himself that he could be that guy. What are your thoughts on this performance tonight? I love it. Um, you know, I, I think Kellen Moore is doing a good job getting him involved early and making him, um, giving him um, touches right away, um, making it a focus to get him the ball. Unlike, I feel like last year, we didn't really do that with Cooper. But I think this this year, he's kind of focusing on making sure he's the wide receiver one at least these couple of weeks, and hopefully he keeps that going forward as well. 97 yards on six receptions and a 30-yard touchdown. You love to see that from number 88. And the return of Michael Gallup. Welcome back, MG. He had 24 yards on two receptions and a touchdown. And this won't be mentioned on the stat sheet, but he threw he drew two defensive pass interferences during that game that kept drives alive. And it's just great to have him out there and um, just – uh, carrying some of that pressure from C.D. Lamb and Cooper Rush. He continues to ball out. Ugo, what did you see from Cooper Rush today? I thought he played good. You know, he takes his shots when they're there. Like, I love it. You know, he's not one of those pack-up quarterbacks that just, you know, dink and dunk here and there. But when there's a shot there, he'll take it. And I, and I just love it. And having Michael Gala back as a vertical threat definitely shows and let's just throw this out there. There's no quarterback controversy in Dallas. Dak Prescott's the guy, and Cooper Rush has played well. He's winning games, but he's not the reason we're winning games. He's protecting the ball, but the defense is carrying us, and hopefully that continues. And to me, this means that Dak Prescott could take more time to recover so he's not rushed back to the football field. Ah, rushed back. 
Yeah, I agree. back. <laughs> I didn't even mean to do that. <laughs> now, what are your thoughts on what the Dallas Cowboys are doing at the left guard position? Throughout the game, we saw Connor McGovern uh, start the game, but then they ro- they rotated between him and Jason Peters. What, what are your thoughts on that? What are they doing? Um, just leave the veteran in, you know, Jason Peters. Just leave him in. You know, I just love him being next to Tyler Smith, Connor McGovern. Uh, those penalties, he's just uh, – we just got to roll with Jason Peters. You know, let him get acclimated to the offensive line. Stop flip-flopping and just roll with Jason Peters. That, those are my thoughts, at least. What do you think? Do you think differently? No, I think the exact same. Future Hall of Famer, Jason Peters, you need him in the offensive line next to the rookie, the young guy at the center, Tyler Biotish, and the rookie, Tyler Smith. Mm-hmm. And special teams, um, Money Maher, 4 for 4 again. Who would have thought he would have been s- – super accurate for the Dallas Cowboys the second time around. If you would have told me he he only missed one field goal this year, I wouldn't believe you. <laughs> and that one miss was before halftime where you just had to trot him out there for like, like a 60, 60 yard field goal. Yeah. So you love to see that from Brett Maher. Now let's take a look at the NFC East. The standings through four weeks. We got the Eagles at 4-0, Cowboys 3-1, Giants 3-1, and, and Commanders 1-3. What are your thoughts on how the division looks throughout four weeks? Honestly, I'm just waiting for the collision course against the Eagles. I just want it. I, I'm ready to play them, bro. We're I'm there. ready. I'm ready. Other than that, none of these teams scare me. We're better teams than them. But the Eagles are the ones that I'm looking forward to, and I think we, I think we could take them for sure. Week six, I cannot wait. And maybe Dak Prescott's back by then. Yeah, that might be the the week. At least I think it's gonna be the week. Mm-hmm, for sure. Now, any last thoughts before we wrap this up? No, just a hey, three and one feels good. You know, we we had our doubts week one, but here we are. I mean, I'm glad they proved me wrong at least. So shout out Cooper Rush, the offense, and more importantly, the defense. They're just nasty. Yeah, they've definitely proved in a lot of us wrong. And let's see how it goes. Now, with that being said, hit that like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the Star Vision YouTube channel. And hit those post notifications for live updates when I upload a new video. And comment down below your thoughts on this matchup. Stay safe. Peace out.